the fuck are you wearing? Me or Albo? Albo, what is this purple shirt? It's a f burgundy flannel button down. Okay, it's called style. I think you have there to change. You go. I'm not changing. I think you have to. Why? If I'm because changing, I can't look you can, at you like that. Then you can change the beanie on your head. This beanie is like, not as bad you, as that you shirt. Look like, you look like a fucking cartoon character with that thing on. I look good. You look like you're sexually confused. You know you're gonna change. I'm not gonna change. You have to change. Why? <laughs> Should I just take my shirt off? Just pop my shirt off? I'm going to sit here until you change do, that shirt. Do girls watch this? Girls are about to watch this. We're running out of time for our banter because we have to invite our guests in five minutes. <laughs> that is oh, a I look way better now. You're right. Now that I have traps. I won't hold you down. I didn't get funding for the first half of summer. What should I do? questions Derek no oh, boo hoo boo hoo so if you want a professional me, athlete didn't get the money from the school would you like to lend me five thousand dollars to take one class no I don't think I do US dollars exactly so you eleven thousand dollars Canadian so yeah. you shut and you keep sucking you guys are killing know, Jamie, me let with the know. swearing let them know. swearing. You know how hard just, it is to bleep the swearing? Out? This gotta, part isn't coming in the podcast. You just wanted to have the ish, elbow shirt issue in the podcast, and you're not getting it. I won't hold you down. Hello, fellas. No, let, I didn't like that. Let's start that again. That was not good. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Roundtable, episode nine. You should know us all by now. I am the good-looking one. We have Albo, who is now wearing a new shirt in the bottom left-hand corner, and Jamie wearing a nice button-up. Can't see his neck. It must be cold in the basement. How's it going, it, fellas? It is cold outside. It's three degrees. Give me a break. <laughs> you well, live I'm in Michigan, I'm almost. You are, you are a Michiganite. You should I be live, used to cold. In Northern I live 10 too. minutes down the road from you. <laughs> Yeah, but you've spent the last eight years in Michigan. Yeah, I know, but right now doesn't matter. We're talking about this the weather is, immediately. This is tropical weather where there is exotic hockey players around here right now. We're more north than where <laughs> I live. What, what a Michigan. strange word to use, exotic. You weird. Exotic. Know? I wonder where I got that exotic word from. It's because you watch Tiger King. <sighs> yeah, Joe. It's true. All right, let's cut to the chase here. Yesterday I went on and I had a little rant called Reality Check. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys wanted to add anything onto that. No, I. Yes, yes, what I talk about. Yes, I do. <laughs> so a lot of it is I see, not only some of our athletes, former nutrition clients that I had, but I see them posting on Instagram, just straight up junk food that they're eating. I uh, the guys that usually are posting their food about how healthy they're eating and showing off and trying to impress their friends that they're eating healthy ghosts nothing and it's just like you said it's like you said in your rant yesterday when this ends it's an not only is it an even playing field for everyone but their gates are open and whoever did the most work is going to get the lead right out of the bat right in a training camp right into trials whatever right into the season could be so i, I just don't understand why s some of these goalies and athletes are just are just for lack of a better word throwing it away i'll say instead of what i want to say they're just throwing it away they have all this time you have nothing but time there's nothing else to do you have no priorities you have a drop what why aren't you getting better if you want this to be you want to get to the point where you either go to the major junior or you go to college and you get to pro and you make money at this get off your asses and get to work we're giving away free resources there are other goalie coaches out there making you pay for the stuff that we're giving you for free Get up and get moving. It's, it's driving me nuts. And what's even worse is when I talk to the parents and say, well, hey, why, what's your kid doing? Why is your kid not doing anything? And the parents are peppering in the excuses for the kid. You got to be kidding me. Like, this drives me crazy. If the hardest working guy in the room is me, who doesn't play, who makes 
who's, who's, who's doing everything for free for, for you, if I'm the hardest working guy in the room, there's a problem there. You guys are still trying to play at a high level. You, there's nothing that you do good enough right now to play at the next level. Everybody thinks they're sick and that they're ready to move up. You're out of your mind, fellas. You guys are out of your mind. There's not one part of your game right now that is going to give you success at the next level unless you get better. Guys that are playing junior A that think they're going to step in to college and be a number one guy, delusional. You guys are delusional. And it's time for a reality check. And that's why I had to come out with that post yesterday. It's like, you know, like it's coming. And if you're not ready, if you get off to a bad start, what coach in the world is going to be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to let you have five games where you give up five goals because, you know, there's a quarantine and I understand. No, I, I don't. There's so many things going on in my head as well. First of all, no one owes – the goal is listening. No one owes you anything. You don't deserve anything. Anything you get, you have to earn. So just because you played – you're the starting goalie or AAA or you're starting goalie in whatever junior league you played on last – last year doesn't guarantee anything all the other goalies are coming for your job they're trying to steal your position and there i can guarantee you there are other goalies out there probably working harder than you so for, so wake up start getting to work stop being lazy and number two is we don't want to have to babysit you but we will because we have things to do it's not like our lives revolve around making sure that our athletes work out but if we need to start being like being all over these guys then we have to because it's it's frustrating for us because it takes time out of our day just to try to make sure that we get these guys on the right path so that they can have success it's about them having success you know it's i just like what the heck like if, like you How said if you're you working if both if we're, we're working out harder than our goalies right now something is something is upside down we're living in the upside down right now what, what worries me about it is how this is going to play out on their confidence come training camp because confidence in yourself and in your ability comes from doing the work that you know you should be doing. So you, you can give yourself all the like affirmation and, and talk positive in your mind all you want. But at the back of your mind, if you don't do the work, if you don't take advantage of this, of this downtime, and do the things that you know that you're supposed to do, then when it comes time to perform, that's going to be eating away at you in the back of your mind. You're going to be stepping on the ice knowing I didn't do everything that I could to be prepared. And lack of confidence comes from a lack of preparation, just like confidence comes from preparation. So you have to have a little bit of a, of a long-term mindset here and understand that what you do today impacts your performance tomorrow. So it's not about today. It's about, I want to be better down the road. So you've got to do the work today. Uh, well, uh, how know, many times uh, in junior hockey, uh, get out of here, Phillips. How many times in junior hockey have you seen a guy come into camp who was the number one goalie last year and get outworked by the younger guy and lose minutes? Happens every year. Happens all the time. And this is what happens some of these year. guys are – playing junior a hockey or junior b hockey are thinking is like oh, i was the number one guy last year i can i can coast on my laurels and i could not put in the work and i'm still going to get my 35 games we talked about this in the last one there's no guarantee you're not getting 35 yeah. starts because i've seen it all the time and i've seen my goalies have that mindset and it just drives me crazy because we live it for 15 mm -hmm. years we've lived this and jamie mm -hmm. lived this when he played how many times have you gone into a situation jamie as a guy who was billed as number two and just took their minutes away. Every time. Every single time. And in college, after Phoenix left and you were billed as the number one guy, there's two guys behind you that want to take your minutes. Did you take your foot off the gas? No, I worked significantly harder, so I kept those spots and I started 96 games in a row or something. Relax. We don't need you. Don't need to be dropping your stats right now. Oh, yeah, I'm, just, games well, in I'm, gonna, I'm linking elite prospects to the show notes. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, uh, it, but it comes. It is serious. It is in a serious note. Like I played pro hockey. I played college hockey. I made it to pro. I was able to live out my dreams. No one ever had to tell me to go work out. Not once. I have to tell people to. They just if anything, they just say stop working out so much. Like. It's either you want it or you don't, fellas. <laughs> as, as you, as at the end of the day, 
Yeah. If you don't make it pro and you, you can't complain and say, oh, my goalie coach was bad or I didn't get a good – no, it's, it's on you, 100% on you. Every, whether you have success or you don't, it's on you. Like I, hate to, you know, I hate to use myself as the example, but I had to work that hard because for I was not good enough. I was very slow. I had heavy feet. I, had, I, I was out of shape at one point. I had all these things that I had to do to get better. And I knew this is what I wanted, so I had to do it because I, I wasn't. I never once sat there when I played junior or college or even early or even in pro, and I was like, "Wow, like I've I've made it. This is it. I'm sick. I'm unbelievable." I would always be calling Derek. How can nice I get the beginning better? of the end right there? Calling all my calling everyone, re, like doing all this stuff because I knew I wasn't good enough. And to the to the last game I played, I've always strived to get better in some way. And that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe we're wired differently than some guys, but I don't know. I played pro. I don't know what else to say. Like, I had to earn that. Well, was you, earned. It you, wasn't go back to what, you go back to what Derek said. Jamie's the one who worked the hardest. Jamie's the one who dialed in. And who's the one that made it the furthest and had the most success? Right? It's, it's the recipe isn't complicated. <laughs> you just have to put in the work because – if you're putting, if you're truly putting in the work, it's the other guys are going to, they're just going to fade away. And you see it in everything. The guys I grew up playing around, they just started to fade away and they didn't want to work. They wanted to do other things. That's fine. You're allowed to have other interests, but you might, you're probably not going to make it. And that's the, you know, that's the harsh reality of it. And that's, that's what we need. We need a reality check right now. All right. Let's, uh, let's introduce our guests. We have Ev from Vaughn. He's going to come on. He's going to talk about some, uh, some of the cool stuff Vaughn's got going on. They got some cool custom graph skates coming out that I've seen that are pretty awesome. The new Velocity 9s are out. And let's see if we can, he can drop some tidbits on the new SLR 3s. Good stuff. That everybody wants SLR like that threes. V. Good stuff. That everybody wants like that V2. Um, the V2 is the best pad ever made. I'll just put it up there. The kid at Northern Michigan loves the graphic. Yeah, it was just like that's what was groundbreaking. Like when I was looking at pictures of my stuff as a kid, I had a uh, I don't you guys probably won't know him, but uh, Jeremy Symington was selling stuff on Craigslist. He was like an AHL guy, like minor league pro, played for a handful of years, and uh, I picked those up. But yeah, true like V two shin, uh, V two pad, double break. Of course, at the time that kind of sucked, but God, like those things were sick, and just the oh, feel yeah. was incredible. And now it's like ever since then I got hooked. Yeah. So. The worst Does that part drive you guys nuts when you got all this new technology and all this new research and development going to new pads and then guys want velocity twos. Um, we don't, it's always the one offs and there's a, there's a list of about four, maybe five kids that love Jonathan quick that I've dealt with that like yeah. try to play with him. Like Ryan Edquist, <laughs> uh, uh, this kid, the kid I co-host with, Kyle Conan, um, God, Garrett McKay. Those are the few that will get that true, like, whatever quickies in. So they end up in, like, a V4 with V2 mods and stuff. So it's, like, the closest thing to a true V2. Um, but, yeah, it's it's tough because it's – for us, it's really hard to make, actually. Because <clears throat> when you look at a – I didn't bring a goalie pad in here. But when you look at a goalie pad, everything now is a glued core, right? So everything's pre-cut, it's all glued together, it's all put together and everything, and then you lace it in. Back then, like Jonathan Quick's pad, Corey Schneider when he was in old stuff, Tuca when he was in old stuff, all that stuff was shredded foam. So you kind of create like a small, like a cord, not like what we have today, but like a, a body pretty much. And then you just filled the pad with shredded foams. You know how like painful that is? They create basically a pocket, they pull it onto a tube, and it air pressure guns it into the pad. So for like quickie, because he wants it stiff, they have to pack it and pack it and pack it and pack it. So it's, uh, it's definitely a pain to make for us. That's for sure. Well, we're going to get right into the introduction. This is a good topic. We're going to keep it going. But we have two guests with us today, our first ever two guest interview, both from Vaughn Goalie, one from Vaughn in the States, one from Vaughn Canada. We have Ben Thomas in Vaughn Canada and Ev Bobarito in Vaughn USA so let's keep that topic going that sounds like a just sounds like high maintenance when you when the, the technology to make a pad stiff is there but you have to just add in all the stuff that makes it soft to the point where it's stiff 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it's very, uh, a big word would be like counterintuitive, right? So um, you have the tech and you have what's new today, which makes sense. We can really stiffen things up. It lasts a lot more, the carbon fiber reinforcement, all those things are making the pad and it's taking it to where, you know, we want to go. But when you have a guy that, you know, like Quickie that wants it to wrap the skate, he wants it to wrap his leg a little bit more. He wants to really feel it in the pad. You know, we're not going to push him out of that just because we always want to make sure that all of our guys are comfortable. But we, we see where he's coming from, where that V2 pad, that old school pad was just so, so comfy. But we've made a lot of tweaks to our pad today where we have like the RC strap. With the new V9, we've gone to where we can tighten up the shin. So we narrow the shin. So you're getting a lot of that same feel, but now you have a carbon fiber core. You have a full foam core pad. So in terms of whether you're playing men's league or you're playing college or pro, that pad's going to last you a lot longer than what it would have. Obviously, guys at different levels are going through different amounts of sets of gear because of the workload, but that pad that they're getting into now is going to last them out a lot longer than it would have with old tech and old previous you know, stuff. To Ev's point there with the... Um you know, that V2 pad being shredded. Like you said, Quick wants it super stiff, so you have to add more foam. So it's kind of hard for guys like that that are getting multiple sets a year to replicate that same feel. Because if you don't stuff it the same, it's going to be a little softer. You stuff it too much, it's going to be too stiff. So with that new um, glued core, it's, it's way easier to get that same feeling, you know, you know pad after pad. So the... Um, it's way easier to replicate that same feel with the new um, style cords as well. You're able to offer that consistency. So like, yeah. you know, if Jamie needed three sets through the year, you know, set number two doesn't feel different from one, three isn't more stiff than two, that kind of thing. So can the general consumer come in and get that same thing? Or is that just for the guys that are playing pro? Um, today now with the new V9 sheets, which is actually really exciting. Um, we offered a new, a whole new, uh, custom order form um, with the form you can pick the stuff you could always pick like single break you obviously do all your colors your name your specs um, strapping we made it a little bit more simple on the sheets to understand strapping but something that we've actually taken to the public which is something we've always done but it was a lot harder to get access to because you couldn't see it and if you didn't see it you didn't know what to ask for right but on the new v9 pad you can choose on your top part so your thigh to knee portion you can do a stock stiffness a soft stiffness or extra stiff. And then for euros, which Ben could explain if we want to get into it, we have an extra, like a, I think it's called very stiff or extra, extra stiff where the Euro players like everything. So straight from the top up, right. They just need it like rock hard. And then for the boot portion of the pad, you can pick stock, you can pick soft, and then you can pick uh, stiff as well. So we have all these different options now for end consumers. So whether you're playing 16, you 18 juniors, um, you know, you're in the O, you're playing in the show. Everybody has that, uh, the, that choice selection, excuse me. Yeah. So like Ev was saying, um, that extra, extra stuff, it seems like, I mean, I deal with most of the, the European guys. Um, so a lot of things I'm seeing, you know, super stiff pads, chest protectors are, you know, crazy protective. They're doubling everything. Um, I mean, Jamie, you'd probably be, you know, to speak on this a little bit better, but uh, from what I hear is that they do practice a lot more and, you know, that your starter goal or goalie, let's say, is, you know, he's taking morning skates. He's taking, you know, twice the shots that a, a pro player in North America would be taking. So they like everything, you know, way more protective. Um, they're getting, you know, less gear over the years. So they like their pads super stiff. So at the end of the year, if they only have one set, it, you know, it's still feeling, um, you know, like it was day one. So can you guys talk about the difference between your two families in terms of equipment with the, velo the velocities and then the Ventus for kids that don't know or, or have to make a decision on, do I buy the velocities or do I buy the Ventus? Yeah, yeah so. uh, I'm a big velocity guy, so I can speak to that for sure. Um, can you? Am I coming in okay? Because it's a little. No, I'm just laughing that you're just, just, just red. Took that show there. <laughs> it's all right. I'm used to um, it. The uh, the V9 and velocity family has always been like that was my bread and butter. Um, probably because I'm only five six, maybe five seven on a good day. 
So having that little bit softer, more flexible pad has been awesome. Um, but what the velocity, I think, that truly sets it apart is when you're looking at it top to bottom and you're going to get into your stance and you're looking at the pad, when you're pressing down on it, you're compressing, and as you go through your gameplay, you're actually going to get more twist left to right through the pad, where SLR, it's going to be very, very stiff up to bottom, top to bottom. So it's not um, – somebody brought up a comment the other day on social media. They were asking questions. Maybe it was goalie coaches, but uh, they were talking about, like, you know, like the SLR2, you guys say it's your stiff pad, but it's really, really not that stiff. And one of the big things there was, you know, we want it to still have a little bit of play. So when guys are going into like reverse and the, the tops are hitting, when you have rock hard stuff and they're colliding and you're hitting each other and you're going down and up and down, that stiff dust, stiff pad doesn't give you any flex. So to have a little bit of play there is huge. But getting back to the velocity, that's always been that pad that really wraps the leg well. It responds. It gives you that little bit of compression you need in the boot. We've really changed to where our boot used to get so soft where it would settle around the skate and you'd lose a little size to where it'll settle now, but it sits flat. It's not going to compress. You're not going to lose size. It's not going to completely fall apart and get, you know, where it gets floppy. Everything will hold its core because of the carbon. So when you're looking at your reverse play, when you're looking at going in your post um, and being a little bit more comfortable, looking for a little bit more compression, that's what the velocity has always offered. So actually, I'm kind of glad that I've took over there because I'm actually more of like the Ventus style. Like I like my pad to sit a little bit higher up off my skate. Kind of feel like it's, I don't like that Jonathan Quick, like feeling like real in tight with the pad. Like I want it to, you know, sit a little bit in front, um, a little bit more rotation to it. Um, and then like I've said, like it is our stiffer pad. Um, now I'm just talking like the stock core. It's our stiffer pad, but it's not like too stiff that you're kind of battling against the pad when you're doing, you know, you know, a stiff pad's great. If you're set and dropping, great. But if you, you know, you're making that movement, kind of those awkward situations, personally, I find if the pad's too stiff for me, I'm battling against it. It's usually not doing me any favors where I, I find the Ventus is that nice kind of in between stiff pad, but also, um, you know, flexible when you need it to be. Um, so yeah, that's uh, kind of why I like the Ventus um, over the velocity line. At what point would you recommend a goalie that's like, say they were wearing a velocity series and they're, they're like, well, I like the pad. I want to make it super stiff. At what point would you just be like, hey, it's better to just switch to, a, to the SLRs? It's, it's tough now because the SLR has a little bit more of that curvature shape because that's what we're playing to. That's that whole idea of that family of pad is that stiffness, right? You want it to be a little bit more pre-curved. So you have that shape, but then build it stiff in that position um, where the velocity has always kind of tapered around your leg. So when, you know, when the goalie's is standing there and his thigh comes down, shin comes back in and the boot sits flat, that offers a totally different feeling. And it's a response to the skate. We have done, where you can do a soft boot, so you get a little bit more response, but I think it's still you're playing with that pre-shaped uh, uh, core, excuse me. So what I would do is if a velocity guy wants a super stiff pad, but he likes the way that it still twists, because when you stiffen up a V9, if you do a top, uh, top stiff top, and then you stiffen up the boot, it's still gonna compress a little bit. You're still gonna get that rotation through the leg. And when you lean into it, you're still going to get a little bit more cushion in the boot when you're going into a reverse play or when you're skating and you're going to or recover to your feet. You're going to get a little bit more play out of the velocity than you would the SLR2. So I don't think I could actually push them unless they're asking for, you know, I want a rock hard boot. I need a little bit different profile. If they're completely open to changing that aspect of the pad, then, yeah, we would jump into the SLR2. But I think that velocity style, even when you stiffen it up and it has that shape that tapers in with the shin and it follows your true leg, I think at the end of the day, I wouldn't really be able to push them out. But at the end of the day, we do like to show everybody the new stuff because I, I'm sure you realize when the SLR came out, like Matt Murray was always a velocity guy. He jumped into it. Thomas Grace was a velocity guy. He jumped into it. So there's guys that are athletic that will still jump into that pad just because it was so comfortable. So it's uh, – it's a case by case or goalie by goalie situation kind of thing. 
that makes sense. Is there anything in terms of the toe? Because we talk a lot about post integration and going into RVHs, uh, transitions in and out. In terms of the SLR toe and the velocity toe, um, like I've seen them both. There's they're a little bit different angles, and there's definitely a difference in the in the firmness. Do you, how much testing does that go in for you guys when you guys are designing these pads? Uh, it's definitely been a ton where um, we, when we're building stuff, we don't come out with a feature. Mike doesn't design a feature and say, okay, like this is where the pad needs to go. This is where we need to take it. This is the direction we're heading in. We're going to change goaltending. It's what are goalies doing today? What are, you know, what are coaches like you instructing kids? Are we going, because uh, like early on when people were playing with the reverse, it was a lot of skate on post, like steel to post. Now guys were going shin on like Duca. Then you have other guys going toe on. And now we're starting to really develop that technique on the coaching side. Everyone's starting to figure out, okay, well, this looks good. That looks good. That doesn't look great. We're finding more and more guys like having that softer compression because it really allows them to lean into things and push in when the boot can compress. And then you get a better seal onto the post. So in terms of that, we kind of looked at the velocity and saying, okay, we need to kind of keep it where it has a lot of flexibility. Um, but now with the SLR2, that pad was de designed around being a stiff boot, stiff core. So that still offers that position where when you're leaning into the post, we could soften it up a little bit more for you to make it flat. But at the end of the day, the goalie looking for that, you know, when they press down on their pad, it sits a little bit higher off the skate. We kind of leave it for them. But we're always trying to look at where the technique's going to where should we do a soft boot on the SLR2 to where maybe that's where the technique's headed? Or should we allow that feature to still exist so that way that goalie gets that stiffness all the way top to bottom? So it's kind of a weird balance of, well, what do we want to make stock? Because that's what it's, what's going to be offered at all the stores. A lot of kids that don't have the opportunity to get custom gear or pay for that top dollar, we still need to keep them in mind on what they – looking for and what they have access to if that makes sense yeah does mike mike vaughn is he in charge of all product development or does he have a team that works with him um he he has a team uh so that's the first answer to the question there's a couple people that will kind of come up together with ideas one of them being brent and then we have ashley both of them are from bond canada they'll meet with him to kind of design things Mike has his own ideas, but what do you, you know, the one thing I give him a lot of credit for is when he's coming up with stuff like at our last sales meeting, he has a lot of guys like us that are in the field, like Ben that are going to your guys' camps. So we're seeing a lot of what's going on day to day, right? Like we're seeing a lot of, I can even compare to what was happening in like 2016 to now is very, very different in terms of what kids are doing, what kids are looking for the overall feel. So he'll ask us and look for advice and like, Hey, where should we take this? So we're actually in the developments of something new that'll come out. Uh, I mean, with the way things are going, we'll say next year, like maybe late winter or early winter. So December-ish into next uh, 2021. But there's a lot of new integrations that we're really, really excited about where we've changed kind of the face because people are looking for a very, very active face now, like even more so than what we currently offer. Uh, the way that the shin is going to wrap and the overall profile of the pad. So we've taken a lot of that to what goalies are looking for in terms of stiffness and landing because everybody wants to be sealed to the ice, right? You don't want to have a rock. So when your knee block hits, you don't want the pad to rock with you, right? You want to be flush. You want everything to seal nice. So those are all the changes we've taken to that pad. Now, Ev and I first met back in when I played college because I don't know if you still do it. Are you still the college guy? So Ev – I'll let him explain his job, but he's there is a there's gear day at every school, and the reps all come in and they show off their gear to the players and for goalies they come in with goalie stuff. And we had talked about it with in the Bauer episode. But my question for Ev is, when you travel to all these schools, do you ever find that there is, you know, the requests are different depending, you know, with college guys to major junior, and then. Is it a lot easier to deal with the big budget schools compared to the little budget schools? Oh, it's a great question. Um, but just to clarify and throw in a little uh, tidbit there. So we actually have, well, in the U.S., it's a little different. So we have three college guys. It'll be me, Scott Hughes, and Adam Berkel, and we'll kind of divide up 
uh, areas and who needs to see schools and who already has some teams there so we can all kind of hit the you know pro college and all at the same time um, but to the last part of the question in terms of budget schools bigger schools d1 versus d3 things do get a little bit complicated there because obviously even in the d1 ranks when you look at like and you compare all the different leagues and conferences there you know some teams may have you they deal with smaller budgets right so we kind of tailor fit things to them and we know what, you know, they can handle, what they can offer. Some team or some schools will send big deals where they have a deal with somebody because they have a ton of player stuff. Um, so then because they order all that player stuff, they're kind of pushed into that goalie equipment. They'll cut them a deal on that. And then it kind of, it helps that school, you know, dress their whole hockey team at a better price. So there's certain instances like that, but even then we want to make sure we help try and work things out because if we have guys go to those schools, um, we want to make sure they're comfortable if they're Vaughn guys. Now there's other instances where we have kids go to certain schools where once they're there, it's done. Or they're, you know, like to the point where they say, no, like they can't wear anything. And if they do, they have to buy it on their own. We've had guys that want to jump in a Dom's mask that the school don't want to pick up, doesn't want to pick up. So we'll, kind of work with them and hook them up and make sure that they get into it just because the mask is so important. They want to be comfortable. Right. Um, and then uh, in terms of when we're kind of going to see schools and where goalies are at compared to maybe a major junior kid, I don't think there's really many differences. It's the only time you get differences is when the play style changes, I think. So having, guys that are coming over from Europe because we'll see those occasionally with schools those guys will operate a little bit differently and the way they look at a pad I have found out is very very different than you know most North American guys but even Canadian versus American the way that they see the way they ask for stuff where you know we've had some Canadian kids at schools that are asking for different internals where they need the top super super stiff or they need it to um what did I have before? Oh, he wanted the shin like reinforced. I go, why? He's like, well, taking pucks off the top, I get my stick on them. So thigh to knee, I can get my stick on everything. But when the puck hits the shin, I don't want it to die in the shin like any of us, right? I mean, that play styles change where instead of controlling rebounds where you'd eat those and cover those up, guys want them 10 feet out, right? They want those to go back to the blue line and out of the zone. So we found a way to reinforce the face in the shin area. Um, but it does bring up a point and uh, something I thought about was like college guys, you get one set, right, Jamie? And then yeah, you had tackle, like tackle only gave us one set, one set and six blockers and like six gloves. Four, <laughs> <laughs> which at the D one level, though, that is a lot. Um, but uh, compared to junior or major junior guys that might get two sets, that makes it a little bit tougher for you, obviously. Um, having gone through that experience your pad breaks down and then with a long season so you guys do make a big push through uh, playoffs when you're going into that championship series like you know you don't have a fresh set and it's pretty beat up so you got to find a way to make things last so we will build around that for those guys where you know major junior guys they don't have to worry about it as much Ben you work with the majority of the major junior guys in Ontario you want to talk about the difference between college kids and then dealing with the OHL guys? Um, well, kind of like I've said, like majority of like, you know, the, the teams in the O, their goalies are typically getting two sets. Um, so they don't have to deal with that, you know, pad breakdown so bad um, as the, the college kids. But um, it, it really depends on the team and even the goalie coach, like, um, there are you know some teams of the GM it's like no I want my goalie to look like this or you know whether it's colors or the, you know the last year I saw a lot of GMs like no I want my goalie looking huge like he's got to wear this chest protector this kind of style um, other times the goalie coaches have influence and then you know there are some teams where it's you know the wild west and goalies you know just do whatever they want um, so it's really team by team it's it's hard to kind of really generalize that What's the wildest request that you got from a GM or goalie coach saying like, no, my goalie has to do X or I can wear X. Uh, it's typically the chest protector, like wanting them just to look enormous and, you know, obviously filling up space is great, but if the goalie can't move, it's not comfortable. You're not really doing them a, you know, a service there. So um, 
you know, I think it's better personally if the GMs kind of stay out of it. Let the kind of the goalies, even the goalie coaches, you know, let them do their thing and, um, you know, let the GMs do the, the hockey operation side of things. One thing that I have had from a goalie coach with a <clears throat> D1 uh, women's player was they, and I just, I still think about it today, but they keep saying that the pad was too small and they want to see them in something bigger. And I go appearance wise and visually, like aesthetically, it may look nice to look bigger, but in terms of when the goalie goes down, when they're trying to recover, when you're trying to be square in the knee and flush and you don't want that pad to come up too high to where when you're coming down, it's interfering a ton. Like you don't need a bigger pad just to look bigger. You want to function more than you want to look huge. Right. That was something that was kind of frustrating, but in order to appease everybody, we made some tweaks to where you can kind of like, let's really, really soften the boot. So it sits flat. So you're kind of dropping it down that extra half inch and then let's, you know, add an extra half inch or an inch to the total height of the pad. So we're trying to look bigger, but in terms of where the knee lands and having control of the pad, we want to keep that the same. That was, uh, that was kind of quirky. Having a yeah. GM tell me what to wear is my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't imagine. It would be awful. But I mean, at that point, you're you know, 17, 18. And what are you going to do? True. Like I remember one time in, in the cheese, we, I didn't have any sticks and Manitoba wasn't sending any down. I was where I was using like comp, full composites and they pulled out these Jonathan quick warriors from a defunct team that eventually moved from like, Evansville that moved like five years later to Jacksonville, these Jonathan quick warrior foam cores. And they're like, this is all you get. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> the curve is like this. I, I I just looked at it. I was like, this ass, this can't be, this can't be real. I got one of those in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, those are the kind of sticks that you you buy a Canadian Tire just to cut up to make like a patio chair out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Anything to save a couple bucks, though. That's all that matters. Oh yeah, what, what a league. How what about in terms of pro of guys? Oh, sorry. I will go ahead. I, you're not no, even on my was... screen. I can't even see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, uh, my question was in terms of the, the orders, when you guys do get custom orders in, is there anything that would be like a red flag for you guys of kind of, you're looking at like, no, we can't do that. Or this can't be what they mean. Like to give some, some clarity to the guys that are looking to fill out custom orders. Is there any way to, that they can make that form more readable for you guys? Well, the, the new V9 form, it, it's honestly, it's almost foolproof. Like you pick your stiffness, you pick your strapping, like it, everything's very visual. It's right there. Um, so it's kind of hard to screw that up. Um, you know, in the past, like we're a true custom goal company. We can do just about anything. Um, so sometimes people ask for things just because they can. Um, so I mean, like with Evan, and I typically we're talking right to the goalie. So if they're asking for something, we usually find out, you know, why they want that or what they're trying to accomplish. So we can kind of work around it that way. Um, but yeah, these new forms, are, they're really making it uh, almost impossible to, to screw things up. Alvo, do you got anything else? Because I can't even see. <laughs> no, I'm good. That was the best part of my day is not seeing you. <laughs> Do you guys got any, you guys got any crazy stories about pro guys that want some just ridiculous stuff? Like I remember Ben telling me about uh, a guy that used to train here that had some crazy requests with his equipment. And then I think wore it one time before he retired. Um, for me, in terms of having stories, all the guys that I've dealt with have been actually super easy and I'm very, very thankful for that. I think it's because I, I uh, like I one of the big guys, Vaughn guys that I deal with is like Peter in Carolina. I don't deal with him. I go to see Carolina. He actually deals with Scotty, who uh, set him up since he was a kid. But when I go to see him, it's very simple because he always wants to see the new stuff. Okay, I see the new stuff. I want the new stuff, but we'll tweak it to where it's a lot of the same specs from his old pads. So it's very easy for him to get a new, new graphics, a couple new features, but really kind of keeping the same. So he's been very, very simple. And I think at that younger the younger goalie coming up, it's a lot easier to jump into new stuff. But in terms of stories that I've heard from a lot of older guys, the things that they request, um, the little quirks and things like, uh, what was it? It was like herb stuff. Cause I used to talk to the guy who did Eagle 
and he had the same pad, but it kept getting restuffed and restuffed. There was never like a new set. It was like, no, 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 no. Just stick with what we got. But can you like put some new here, change some of the foam at the bottom, but like keep everything the same. And it was just the same thing being rebuilt over and over. It reworked. It wasn't being rebuilt in a new pad. So there's guys yeah, like that. he used to drive it over with his Hummer. That yeah. <laughs> so you just got to, you got to like clean off the tire marks and then repack it here and then we're good to go. So um, I'm trying to think some of the things that Briz used to ask for that Scotty brought up. Oh, Briz had to have some, you had to have some crazy stories with Briz. It's just some of the things they ask for too. And the best part about those guys, cause you think, you think at that level, you kind of made it because you're very, you know, even keel. You're not overly dialed in, but there are still some goalies that are at that level that are definitely goalies um, where it's like, oh, like, I heard this and we saw this and we're trying to tweak this. Um, we had uh, <clears throat> we had him on the podcast the other day. And when I went to see Dreger in Florida, <laughs> I, I tried to keep him laughing, but it made sense at as we discussed it, he's like, Hey, he showed me the profile of his pad. He's like, I just need about four more degrees this way. And I go, what? <laughs> just, yeah. Just like four degrees, four degrees. <laughs> but he was talking about, he just wanted the pad shape to be the same when he was standing. And then when he went down, so it creates that profile in your butterfly, right? Where everything meets, everything touches, you look and you seal the ice really well, but in your stance, everything looks upright. And luckily, because we have such great people that work for us, we brought it to Ash and said, hey, can you actually do four degrees? And she went, boop, and did it. Like, we, I don't know how that works on the processing side of things. She does all our processing, creates the patterns and the foams to send them in the back to be cut. But she's like, oh, yeah, that's cake. And she kicked it back four degrees, and he's happy. We're happy, and we're rolling. Yeah, so like got? I was saying, um, per, like personally, the guys I work with directly – have been great no issues um super easy to deal with um now that being said a lot of the european stuff that kind of just gets sent to me <laughs> some of that's a little bit interesting like um guys are you know asking for that huge list of things it's like no you just want you know this pad and it, it's a little bit um i think of a, a language thing like i mean a lot of guys you know Germany, Switzerland, you know, they speak English, but it's not their, you know, first language. They, they're way better at than I am at German, but there's that, you know, reading through this thing and, and kind of figuring out what they want, even though they're saying something completely different. Like sometimes I'll get um, on the, one order on a pad, let's say, it'll say stiff boot, but stock flex. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Like, do you want it stiff or do you want it, you know, stock, but do they want it stiff um, laterally, but stock, you know, flex. So it's, you see a lot of the same things over and over and you just kind of figure out what they actually mean. Um, I mean, the goalie that you were talking about, Bouge, that was a little bit interesting, some of the stuff they had, but personally, like if you have a huge list of specs or some weird stuff, if you have a reason for it, you know, it, it is what it is and, we'll do it but it's you know those people are just asking for things just to be different or just because they can that's where it gets a little frustrating a little difficult to deal with but yeah personally i've been real lucky with the guys i i've been interacting with i want to talk graph skates because i've seen them and they're awesome so for those for those of the guys out there that don't know Vaughn is making the graph custom skate and uh if you haven't seen it yet you should see it because it's it's pretty sweet so i don't know you guys want to talk about you guys want to talk about that graph skate, Benny? I guess I have to. Um, you have to. You're the only one here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, back when we were playing, uh, it was graph was, it's what you wore. It's, it was probably the top skate. It, it's what everyone wanted. Um, you know, over the past few years, some things happened and then it definitely kind of died a little bit, but, um, I think with this new skate, it, it's definitely back. People, uh, there's some buzz around it. People are talking about it. They, you know, they want to try it on. They want to demo it. It's, um, it's definitely kind of exciting for the Graph brand. Um, and I guess uh, Ev brought it in. So here we go. So if you're listening, on, if you're looking at, listening on Apple Pods or Spotify, you have to go to our YouTube channel. Ev brought the skate on camera, so you'll be able to see it as he breaks it down. So. We got it. So the way that this works, um, 
we have three levels of skates. Top end, high end level is going to be your pro G. Then you're going to go down to a senior G and then your junior G for junior sizes. But we have the reinforced composite quarter panel on the side, right? Tongue or, uh, excuse me, uh, strap loop through the back. The one thing that you'll notice though on the quarter panels, everything's extended a little bit more. The issue with a lot of new composite skates, a lot of the new skates, it's built off a of player boot and the player boot comes straight up and back. Those guys are able to get forward and they're skating a little bit more. When you're leaning all the time and you're trying to get forward in your stance, when you have that extended quarter panel, it allows you to actually get forward. You're not fighting against the skates. You don't have to go two or three eyelets down. So it's gonna allow you to get forward too, having that extended quarter panel. What it does is it, when you lace this onto a foot, sorry if my mic's not in the right spot, but it's gonna wrap more. A lot of skates today, when you lace them up, uh, things will get, Mike just gave me the thumbs up because he sees me preaching about the skate. But when you lace a <laughs> skate up um, and you lace it, those composite quarter panels aren't wrapping. They're squeezing. So what happens if you have a foot that doesn't properly fit that skate and it starts to squeeze, you get cramps, right? Five, 10 minutes in your skate in a practice, whatever, you're going to get foot pain. We have the footbed here. This is one of our famous graph footbeds that'll translate. It's very, very stiff. The holder on this is our 5,000 holder that's tweaked a little bit for this skate. But the difference is compared to a lot of holders, it's very, very stiff. So if I were actually to take the steel out and pull this out and give it a twist compared to other holders, this is going to twist less. So what that means for goalies and goalie coaches, when you're going to push through with your toe right and you're meeting the ice and you're going to kick out, this isn't going to flare out. You're not going to get any miscues. You're not like when we're talking about split seconds of a game and you're going to push and you're going to engage, missing that little edge there and this twisting out and slipping out can cost you a goal, right? So we wanted to make sure everything's stiff through here. In terms of the toe cap, our graph toe cap's always been the same. It's always, a lot of companies with, with the thicker toe cap to address having no cowling, we've always had the same thickness. So everything's been the same there. It's the uh, same thickness as a lot of the other brands that's been uh, reinforced. And then our tongue inside here, because you guys are, because goalies are wearing it, they're getting forward and they're lean. In order to address lace bite, we have the thicker tongue in here. Custom skates, if you needed to tweak it or change it, you want something a little bit more thin, that can be addressed. But other than that, the skate's been great. We have uh, Grace is getting his set, or no, his shipped. We're working on a new one for Holt, people. We're previous graph guys. So when they saw this firsthand, they said, how do we get a pair? We actually FaceTimed Sean with both goalies. Sean's the guy who builds all of our skates in graph, uh, graph hockey at Vaughn Canada. Um, he went over the skate with him head to toe and he's really excited about these and we're hoping to uh, get some really, really good feedback. And then two, the last big feature on our goal skate, the inside's a little bit higher than the outside. So when you're getting into your stance and your ankle's kind of coming up, you won't get any dig back from this outside. We do have this comfort edge on all, all sides of the ankle, but having a little bit lower side here allows when you're in your stance that the skate's not going to push back against uh, your leg. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. That's my pitch. Uh, I, yes. One thing I noticed, uh, sorry, Ben, did you want to say something? No, go ahead. One thing I noticed that I, I noticed because I see a lot of the true skates is in the heel, true puts like a little plastic wedge between the cowling and the boot. And for when I was looking at the grass skate, it looks like your cowling might be, is it raised in the heel to make kind of that forward lean? Well, so that's actually, it's built into the, um, the outsole. The outsole is a little higher in the back. Um, so that basically we don't have to put that, um, heel lift in like a, a true wood. It's actually, um, the outsole is just, it's going to accomplish that for you. Yeah. Cause I've actually seen a couple of those wedges break and then the cowing gets kind of loose and there's that separation. So when I saw those, really? I'm like, that's a, that's a much better design. Yeah. Well, I could see where that would raise some problems when you're in a game and something snaps like that. But uh, yeah, it's already built in into the outsole. So you get a little bit more of that forward pitch. Um, but one thing if Sean was here that we would talk about is when you look at our heel lock, and this is what we've been famous for on grass skates top to bottom, because it's still a two piece quarter panel, it's not a one piece. You're able to get this 3D shape where it comes out 
back down and it wraps your heel. So when you set your foot into the skate, you're not looking into a boot, right? Or a bucket. You're looking into something that'll actually grab under the ankle and hold your foot in place. So you're never slipping out. A lot of skates now, because you have a one piece quarter panel, can't get this shape. So it's a little bit more straight. What happens is if you don't fit that properly or you're not, your foot's not built for that skate or the skate's not built for your foot, if it's not laced properly and you're trying to skate, your foot will actually slide in and out against this ankle. And that's where you get your uh, little bumps, you get uh, calluses on the back of your foot, things like that. So, Now, is the blade on that, is that a exclusive blade to graph? Yeah, so this is our steel that's set up. Um, I'd have to ask Mike, but because of the way it's drilled in, we can work on getting set up with other steel, but now with the whole uh, step steel thing that kind of changes things. So this steel is set up for this skate. Um, and then we have our little puck stopper there through the middle. That's uh, a Cam Ward request. <laughs> yeah, well, Jamie's big on the toe up uh, blocker side windmill. So in case he goes <laughs> keeps anything from sliding through there so yeah um, step this i was curious about the steel because was it like yeah last summer i broke my steel on my skate and to find step steel in my size was an absolute nightmare yep i, you, I you skated, skated on, two weeks i skated on blade. half a blade so just my toe to the middle for two weeks you skated oh. on that yeah i well just be forward in your stance don't be on your <laughs> heels Oh my god! I'm dead serious. Like I, that's what I skated on. I, I called every sports store in Ontario and Michigan. Nothing, nothing. And to get a hold of the reps was like, Did you go to Buffalo. I had, I had to call a team that I hadn't played on before, their old equipment manager, to see if he had blades in stock from when I played there a couple of years like prior. Woof. Yeah. Um. So. Last little tidbit here. This sole is actually a carbon fiber sole. So again, we're trying to stiffen up the bottom. So that way when you transfer out and you push into the ice, none of this boot will actually twist on you. Everything's very firm. It's stiff and it'll go right through. So, but every guy we've shown this to, we've even taken it to a lot of uh, college rooms. When guys see it, they're like, oh, graph exists. One, two, when they slide it on, the comfort is just there. We've always had that. But now with a more like I uh, aesthetically pleasing skate, you get a lot more guys that are open to trying it on. And then once you try it on, you feel that comfort level change. So we're really, really excited for these to hit market once everyone gets back to hockey, but exciting stuff. Is Carey Price going to be wearing them the question on everybody's mind? That's going to be uh, that's a Vaughn Canada question. We'd have to get our Montreal <laughs> guy. We're going to show it to him just to let him see it. So, but obviously we know he's a little quirky about the skate and what he needs and the cowling and cowling list. So we'll see how it goes. I did. Hope you're gonna have a cowling on it. No, so he wants to try everything set up as is. So because he's a guy that he's still wearing a cowling, right? If I'm correct. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, so it'll be a little update for him, and we'll see uh, see what he thinks. But I mean, when you talk about it, attack angles and the way the skate engages, and it's a little bit different, obviously, without the cowling or your attack angle changes. So. A guy at that level, is he going to like the change? Are we able to kind of jump into that new one? That's going to be the question. So, but I did find something cool for you guys. You guys have probably seen it in the pictures, but this oh, is the, Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw that on the on your snap take over the other day. That was pretty cool. Sick logos too, right? <laughs> that's unreal. That looks is that like... the Mighty, Mighty Ducks glove? Yep. That's, yeah, that's so we, we have the full set. Well, the, we... Mike did all the gear for them, but uh, this is the one set that they actually signed by all the cast members of the movie, and then they shipped back. Wow. Little T750. Yeah. Great ball <laughs> hockey glove. <laughs> ben, what did you bring today? Um, <laughs> my dog saw it on here. <laughs> that <laughs> picture's really cool, Ben. You. Yeah, I think it. <laughs> I actually do have access to it. I've got all the cool stuff over there in uh, Michigan. Well, I was just – because we've been helping fold gowns and everything in the back, so um, we're coming in, and I figured I'd record here so that way I have access to a couple of these things. But this is going to be one of the new – V. well, the V9 pad. It's for me to get fully in frame. 
And, but, Good job on the graphic. Yeah, I like the oh, graphic. Wait, it looks cool. Wait, some the last some of those velocity graphics that were in the past were just brutal. But this one is actually <laughs> – this one looks pretty good. This one's sweet. Um, a lot of things that we've been trying to – like I've been trying to get guys to integrate is the point, the long stripe on the point. When you do that with a little bit of color over here, it really elongates and makes the pad look wider, which is something I never realized went into designing graphics, but it's something Mike takes into consideration with every pad is how do we make the pad look bigger than it really is? And for a guy that wears like a 32 or 33 plus 2, like I'll take any inch I can. So when you do a white base and you do a longer stripe and it's a little bit wider at the top and it thins out, it gives that appearance, that optical illusion that, oh, like, look at how wide that pad is. Look at how tall it is. But, yeah, we're really, really excited. The trim down profile up here, it's a little bit more straight. It's not as curved, rolled over. So the V9 is going to be exciting once, uh, again, we actually have to get back to hockey in order is to that see. Is that single break stock? Yes. Yep. Sorry, Al, you all like it. Oh, no. Are you a double break guy still? <laughs> I don't play hockey. I don't know. I don't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to know so who that everything... goalie in, in the back is, though. Is that Passy Nermanen? Who you got back there? No, no that's, that's, at, that's Adam Passy. Burkle. Adam? Oh, okay. The, uh, Where do you come up with these names? There's, there's not an episode that goes by that you want to throw it. A <laughs> something Jeff weird Lerner every time. Or a Passy he, Nermanen. He is the best goalie that... Atlanta has ever seen Kari Letton and, and Dan Turple aside. We, um, <laughs> we have a set of Nerman and gear at the Vaughn Canada factory. Nice. He's got the, the colors are unreal. He has, um, Cartman embroidered on, uh, yeah, he had that the pad cool. trapper and blocker. The oh, I awesome. don't know the story there. Did you guys see the video of him uh, falling off the, falling off the plane after the Finland won the world championships? You guys no. seen that video? What? No. Okay. <laughs> next time, that. next time I come into the factory, I have to bring Albo because he's been he's been a lifetime long supporter of Vaughn, and I think yeah, he'd be like a kid in a candy store. Many. Oh, you got to get in there. I need a new set. Is what I need. Derek, well, ben. We had some SLR twos uh, custom made. I had the graphic set, but Derek, we had them ready to go. I had. Yeah. I had. Yeah, a custom SLR two set ready to go, and two pairs of custom graph skates that were already ordered and then the world kind of came to a stop. So yeah. we're still well, now we're on the topic of the world flip it upside down. What is, so Vaughn hockey has been really involved in the healthcare and the frontline effort. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, we actually had, uh, we did a live with weeks yesterday, but uh, we're in Vaughn USA. We're upwards of, I don't know the exact numbers, but we're over 20,000 on order for gowns. Um, we've re remapped our floor. We've remapped our whole process. Like I'll send you guys pictures later and some snaps, but like you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff that's pushed, pushed aside the amount of pads and gloves and blockers and everything that's been pushed aside, which is, it's, uh, it's very crazy to see. And then you see how many sewers are just cranking through gowns every day, trying to get as many out the door as possible. What's funny is I came in and then I actually brought in my mom for an extra set of hands. We're folding gowns today to box them, ship them out. So the more we can get folded, well, the more that can get sewn and then we fold them, the more we can get out. And uh, a lot of people are asking for overnights and stuff like that. But it's been a very, very unique experience. And the fact that like, we're even trying to, uh, sounds funny to say, but Mike's like prototyping a gown because we're trying to find little, it's all about the inches around you, right? We're trying to find a way to attach the arms to the gown quicker. So that way we can shave a few minutes off each gown, which means we're getting more done each day. So we're just trying to advance our process. And then um, in terms of finding material, Mike brought up a great point. He's like, unless you're really well sourced and you're able to find stuff, it's very, very hard to find material to even make things that people need. So it's a weird situation where hospitals need it. We can make it, but now some, we, early on, we had a little bit of trouble finding materials, but Mike just pulled the shoot or pulled the trigger, excuse me. And uh, we're using a, a thicker denier. Well, I don't, I don't know if, thicker is the right word, but a heavier denier nylon, which means for these gowns that we're shipping out to people, they're uh, water resistant and fluid resistant. So it's very, very exciting where you can actually take that gown, hang it when that person's done with their shift or whatever happens, and then you can disinfect it, wash it down, let it dry overnight, and bam, somebody else can use it the next day. 
So there's multi-use to it, which is really, really exciting. So we're just trying to do, you know, any little bit that we can help. We have volunteers coming in actually to help us fold and um, uh, prep stuff, I guess would be the right word, where we have to kind of draw up where little laces have to get sewn in and stuff like that. But it's been exciting on our end to just be able to help and not just stuck kind of like, well, what can we do? You know, where can we help out kind of thing? Yeah, that's incredible. That's, it's an excellent cause and it's great to see that you guys are stepping up and other brands as well uh before we add a little little lighter note is vaughn has been known for that massive pad you'd see at every hockey store what's the story behind that who thought of it where did it originate and how did, how did it, you make it just it? Became, it just becomes <laughs> such a great marketing tool so um we actually have a couple of the pieces here it's the blocker and the pad but it was a part of that um, the 7000 series where overseas when they were making a lot of the import version of the product, Mike had brought to them like, Hey, could we do an oversized? And I think it's just the coolest thing. Like you see kids pop up at stores. They always post a picture. We always get tagged in new pictures even today. And this is, again, that's the 7000. So that was V2. We're on nine. That's seven years. So that's a 14 year difference. Like those kids, some of those kids didn't even exist when those things hit the shelves, right. Or when they were put in stores. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Mike just asked for it as a promo thing and we got a bunch made, but it's crazy. The box that it comes in is just like ginormous and they're so, so heavy because even though it's stuff, it's not fully specced out, but the amount of foam that you have to put in the thing to like get it to be upright and look like the pad is like insane. But yeah, we have one they, of them here at the office. How many did they make? Um, what is it? It was like maybe three to four sets because – well, it was blocker and pads. So then you could separate like, you know, like one store doesn't need a set of uh, pads and a blocker. They get one piece and then we can kind of just move everything around. But yeah, they're like, maybe we should set up a contest where if you can find all the pieces somehow, like you do a little set or something like that. I'll have to talk to Mike about it. That'd be a bad idea. <laughs> I've not seen the glove. Now I yeah, got to go look for those pictures. I don't the think glove. I've ever seen the glove too. I've only seen blocker no. or pad. It's just been yeah. the blocker and the pads because the glove would be too much to try and like weave a lace through. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I was excited. And now I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that on the custom order list. I need a giant glove. Yeah. yeah. Still won't help me catch. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a podcast too? You want to pump your podcast? Um, so it's a, a little kick off of the Vaughn um, off our brand, but it's uh, called Between Two Posts where we're mainly just going out and we're interviewing anybody that has anything to do with goalie. We, uh, we're going to do some people that work in like the goalie industry of sales through all the major stores. Um, we have everybody from that's played in any league we've talked to. We're pretty excited. We got Shep uh, lined up. We just released one with Matt Murray. Um, we got a couple with like Cal Peterson, Chris Dreger. So we got a bunch lined up, a couple goalie coaches in there too. Um, but yeah, they drop every Wednesday and then uh, you can check them out on Vaughn Custom Sports on Instagram. So just search us. But uh, that's about it. Thank you, though, for the plug. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Yeah, you guys have any on, other guys. questions? I think we're good right now. We'll probably have every time there's a new gear release, we'll probably have you back on. But for right now, the I want, yeah, I want the tippets on the SLR3, but Ben said he wasn't allowed to talk about it. You'll uh, that pads that pads very very like I so I when I came back to Vaughn because I had I had been here for two years I had left when I came back we had the VE8 which it was cool but like wasn't something I was completely psyched about then you saw the V9 and I like all the changes the profile the overall look of the pad like my jaw dropped I was very very excited about that but seeing this next version of our newest pad which would be the slr is like this thing like just blew my mind the stock just tell us all about it the way the pad set up is stock is incredible and will be great because people will walk off or walk into a store grab something off the shelf and you will be completely set up with a pad that like you don't need all the changes. You don't need to go custom to make the changes. It's so well done from start to finish on a stock pad alone. If your store is smart and they carry the right colors, you're set. It's going to be unbelievable. It's very, I'm excited for it. So that's a lot of hype. It's like, and I'm not the thing even, is, a, it's going to live up to it though. Like it, it honestly is, it's, it's going to be pretty good. 
and I'm not even a huge SLR guy, but like it's it's pretty exciting. So, but again, we're still going through a lot of the early stages of R and D, so it it won't you know be planned for release till next year. So everyone can sit tight. It's a good way to end it, right there. That's a good way to end it. Yeah.